We are debating this bill at a time when the people of Ontario are facing a huge affordability crisis driven by an unprecedented housing affordability crisis. And you would not know that reading the fall economic statement. The government had an opportunity with the fall economic statement to change the channel on their $8.3 billion Greenbelt scandal, to change the channel on the fact that they've wasted the last two years not building homes that ordinary people can afford to live in the communities they know and love close to where they work, and instead prioritizing benefits for a handful of land speculators. So, Speaker, I want to tell you what I would like to see in the fall economic statement to address the housing affordability crisis coming out of what many have described as a master class plan to deliver the solutions Ontarians need to address the housing crisis that I released over two and a half years ago. And there's three key points that we need to see in this fall economic statement. One is support to help co-ops, nonprofit, and supportive housing providers address the needs for deep affordability in our housing supply. Two is we need to increase market supply by supporting municipalities to be able to build the infrastructure to house that, to provide uh, infrastructure for that supply, and to actually legalize housing, which are in the bills 44 and 45 I've proposed. And three, they could have, the government could have used the fall economic statement as an opportunity to drive speculation out of the housing market so first time home buyers can be on a level playing field. So why is it so important that this government actually make investments in nonprofit and co-op housing? which for whatever reason they refuse to do in the fall economic statement, even though we're facing an unprecedented housing affordability crisis. Well, first of all, 0% of rental housing is affordable for a minimum wage worker in almost every city in the province of Ontario. 180,000 households in this province are on a wait list to access housing. And we know that previous governments prior to 1995, invested in nonprofit co-op in social housing. As a matter of fact, 93% of the deeply affordable homes built in the province of Ontario were built before 1995. That was the year that the upper levels of government stopped supporting that kind of housing. So why is it not in the fall economic statement, Speaker? You know, think of somebody on ODSP trying to survive on $1,200 a month when rents in places like Guelph and Kitchener are now $2,000, even higher in a place like Toronto. Even the government's own housing affordability task force, which I don't know if the government's ever read their own task force report, says, and I quote, Speaker, while many of the changes will help deliver market housing will also help make it easier to deliver affordable housing, Affordable housing is a societal responsibility. We cannot rely exclusively on for-profit developers nor on increases in supply of market housing to fully solve the problem. That's the government's own task force. That's why we need a fall economic statement that's going to support co-op, non-profit, and supportive housing. Second speaker, we have to drive speculation out of the marketplace. You know that multiple property owners now own one-third of the homes in Ontario. Investors bought 77% of the over 3,000 condo apartments built in Kitchener-Waterloo over the last, between 2016 and 2020. There are now 16,000 homes being used for short-term rentals in the city of Toronto alone. So what can we do about that? The government could have introduced regulations for short-term rentals. They could have brought in a multiple home speculator tax to help drive speculation out of the, the marketplace. They could have had a province-wide vacant homes tax so that first-time home buyers, young families trying to own their first home could be on a level playing field instead of bidding against deep-pocketed, um, oftentimes financialized uh, investment vehicles. Third speaker, we have to increase housing supply in this province by legalizing housing, legalizing multiplexes, 
four-story walk-up apartments, six to 11-story buildings along major transportation corridors. That's exactly why I've proposed bills to do that. You know what, Speaker? But if you look at what the government's done, they, according to AMO, $5.1 billion taken away from municipalities to build infrastructure for housing. 227 in my own riding of Guelph. 40 million just down the road to my neighbor in Kitchener. You know, it is clear that Kitchener needs an MPP who's gonna say yes to housing and is not gonna say no to housing, but also an MPP who's gonna join me here and demand that the government provide the funding that municipalities need to service those houses. Otherwise, they're not going to be built, Speaker. That's how we can increase non-market supply, increase market supply, and drive speculation out of the market to address this housing affordability crisis.